Hi, I'm Dennis Kamaat van der Meer and you're watching Cybert Media. Thanks um, for having me today. Thanks for uh, listening. Actually, you have to listen, right? You can't figure it out. But thanks for being here. Um, my name is Martin Siebert. I'm CEO of Siebert Media. Um, and uh, please help me a little to understand what your background is. Who of you is using Confluence today? Okay, the majority. And um, who of you all is working in a company with more than 100 employees? All right, more than 500 employees? More than 1,000? Okay, still, still a couple. The, m the more often you said yes, or if you raise your hand, I assume the more interesting my talk will be. I hope that the others will still get something out of it. But um, I'm going to be talking about, um, do you remember the video we watched when, when the day started? Um, and uh, Scott Farquhar was um, introducing three companies that are using Atlassian tools in every team. And one of those companies was Vibram. And this was actually a case that we presented at Atlassian. They um, built an intranet for 50,000 um, employees. And um, I want to tell you a little about how we um, created that, quickly brought together, which problems we had, and um, uh, what's the story behind that, and the technology that we we're offering. Basically, it's also uh, something that we want to offer with Acer together. But let's talk about this um, later. Okay, so I've been in a company that has been into agile software development for a long time. And uh, one of the first intranets that we built was in 2001 for a company called VAD. It was not a bad system, but um, still it was very expensive. All customized, um, they were spending a lot of money because we had to build everything custom uh, based. So it was a very expensive. It was a massive system for two and a half thousand uh, people. They had an extra net for 250,000 companies with three million people. So it was an internet and an extra net, big system, but very, very uh, expensive. Then in 2009, we became an Atlassian partner and found out that there's this awesome conference. Isn't this conference awesome? So if you're using the software, you can do so many things out of the box. You just install the, the, the software, and off you go. And um, still, we have been keeping a full-service company, just like Dyson. We want to help you with all the edge cases and connecting uh, things, getting people on board who may not be that technical. Um, uh, and we've been in business for, uh, since 1996, so I had a lot of opportunities to do mistakes uh, creating internets. Um, and we, we created a lot of mistakes. Uh, still, a couple of companies still work with us. Um, those are mainly German uh, companies. I hope that maybe today, uh, today or in the future we will be able to um, work for some uh, Spanish companies also, maybe through Dyson. Um, okay, about my topic, uh, social intranet. I, actually, I want to introduce you to two people, Colin Convince and Adam Adapt, who both try to get their intranet going with Confluence. And uh, Colin Convince is kind of frustrated because it didn't work out the way he wanted. When he started to apply Confluence, it was a breeze. People came in, used that, it was awesome. First it was only his department, then another department, more and more people. Let's assume he had like 10K people in his company. There's a barrier that we see with a lot of customers. So if you want to deploy an intranet, it should be used by everyone, right? So every employee should be able to benefit from that. But there's a threshold for probably 10K people. It's something between one and two, uh, one and three K, 3,000 people that you actively get on board. And the others, they may not be that technical, Difficult. That's where kind of stop signs appear, and you don't get further. 
Um, and when, what Colin then tried is he tried to convince top management to push the internet to those people to help him get it to the other people. Um, and it was so awesome um, because this is kind of Confluence, uh, a standalone who wouldn't do vacation there, um, and a bungalow, one floor, everything works fine, simple building, awesome vacation. Now Colin tries to explain to his manager, look, we're going to build a house. And he thinks about his bungalow. But the manager thinks about a house with a roof, multiple floors. And then he says, oh, it's so incredible. It comes without a separate roof and only one floor. And then the manager thinks, oh, that's not what I imagine as an internet. And that's a very similar situation to when you try to deploy confluence as an internet. You only get so far because you have no rules. And um, so what the manager then said is, why should we do that? Actually, a good fleet manager choose, and I'm from Germany, so you choose Mercedes. <laughs> um, if you buy a Fiat, or I'm, I'm actually um, uh, driving a Toyota and a Ford, and if they break, that's your responsibility. You made the mistake buying the Toyota. If you bought the Mercedes and it broke, it wouldn't be your problem. You'd, you'd have chosen high quality, right? So, um, as a fleet manager, as an internet manager, I should choose Chaplin. Because of all of those people out there, they are all using Chaplin. There was a, uh, a woman in Kansas City, and uh, when I was in uh, Atlantic Summit in San Jose, like only a week ago, she told me, I was at a um, conference in Chicago about internet, and I had the impression everyone was using SharePoint. Everyone was using SharePoint in Yahoo. I don't want to use SharePoint in Yahoo. And um, so the manager says, let's just use what everyone uses, the Mercedes. Um, and yeah, Colin isn't that convinced. So because he knows Microsoft tells their partners, look, this is an awesome product because for every single dollar spent in licenses on SharePoint, you'll have six to nine dollars for partners. Awesome. Yeah. So we are looking at deals between 150 and 1 million K dollars for an internet project. It's good for us. Actually, that, that's kind of the BAD internet that we built back then. It wasn't much more expensive than that. So, uh, but a lot of you are using conference already, and you know what it costs. So, uh, Colin's kind of frustrated. He doesn't get through. He wants his, what he actually needs is a dragon slayer. And I was told by our designers, don't use this picture. But I couldn't resist. <laughs> Sorry, Diana. Um, okay, uh, then we have Adam adapt. He kind of adapts to the situation. And he knows, why do I need a conference? And when I need an intranet? I need an impressive, shining entrance hall. My managers, they want to have an easy system where you go up, go down, look at the news, and go out. So, and this is not conference. Conference is liking, commenting, editing, version history, attachments, all the awesome. Uh, if you want to get rid of email, you need something as powerful as Confluence to do that. If you want to just look at news, what's up, like newspaper, you can only flip pages. So that, that's what the managers want, a very simple starting point. But then you still have those people who want to work. It may get dirty. They, they want to use the conference as it is. You don't want to strip it down until no one can use it anymore. So you need both. You need the splendid entrance hall and you need the working space. And so when the manager doesn't understand what, um, what a house could be, Adam offers a slightly different image. So all of you will have um, um, uh, seen plugins. And we've built, technically, we've built a couple of plugins that on top of Confluence can build a real internet house. 
it's not just a thing, it's not just a splendid um, entrance hall, it's a lot of personalization, internationalization for um, people. I'm going to show you how this works. So, we call that linchpin. It's a conference based intranet. And there are a lot of reasons why this is cool, but let me give you three of those. First, we'll reduce the complexity of conference a lot. Less stuff, less distraction, only the important things for non technical people. So, this is one thing you should. Uh, I hope that I can show you. Um, second, we all offer this Internet 1.0 experience where this shiny starting page, the shiny Internet can be part of it. And at the same time, we'll have an Internet 2.0 components like a microblog, something like Yammer in SharePoint, um, that will bring more social media, more mobile. So, three things less clutter. Less complexity. Internet 1.0, Internet 2.0. And um, let's start with the personalized navigation and homepage. So, conference is always filled with um, um, a lot of content. TV3, where are you? 30,000 pages. That's a lot of stuff. If you want to um, um, uh, get an overview of that, um, what conference doesn't have, and I'm sorry, it's already, I didn't mean to start it already. So what, what you want to have is a navigation. Conference doesn't have a navigation out of the box. We're not the only plugin offering that, but this is fully uh, personalized. So if you're in a big company with multiple sites, with multiple languages, with multiple departments, with multiple locations, you don't want to have one navigation for them all because they, they will find it's irrelevant. You, you want to have a tailored navigation to your Madrid office, to your Barcelona office. You may want to have it in, in Spanish, you may want to have it in Catalan, and I want, you may want to have it in German, and you may want to have it in English. So um, th that's what we do here with personalized navigation. This is an Eng English menu. It also has flyout components, just as you imagine uh, navigations to be. And what I'm doing here is I'm changing um, the profile. So I I'm not in Washington anymore, I'm in Stuttgart in Germany and I speak German. This is something that would be automatic. It would come with your LAP system or your Active Directory. But I'm just uh, showing you. And now the, all of a sudden the navigation changes to a German navigation with German elements. Sorry. And the same goes for what we call must-see news feeds. So we, we decide between must-see and my news feeds. And must-see is what the management wants everyone to see, like the newspaper. And um, this is also fully personalized. So we are seeing a, a page with English news here. And I'm changing that now, just like before, to Wiesbaden in Germany. And then the, ge the news, they become German. Apart from this one news, because this comes from the corporate news pool, so this is for everyone, everyone should see that one. But the corporate news Wiesbaden only shows people from Wiesbaden, right? And this is so important because if you're, we just sold the solution to a chain of hospitals, and if you're in a hospital in a small town, and the laboratories, restrooms, on floor number three don't work, you may want to know that, but it's totally irrelevant to all the other hospitals. And that's what the personalization and where the complexity is reduced. <laughs> and same goes, if I change that to Stuttgart, I'll have a car manufacturing news. Okay, and then there's this My News feed where we can just subscribe to news that we deem relevant for us. So it may be that management thinks I shouldn't be looking at Washington 
tools, but I'm there every second week. So I want to see what they have uh, in stock for me also. And that's where um, this comes in, where you just kind of subscribe to news um, and say what you think of it. Oops. And then, these are only three things, but I just want to limit it to, to the stick in our time schedule. Uh, the third thing is an app store. What, what is, in, my, in our opinion, like a central hub where you can have all the other systems like SAP or a CRM system or a JIRA or you name it, um, other, everything digital can be part of your internet here. And what, what the video shows is how someone um, changes his app store to match his own selection of needs. I'm going to show you a, a screenshot of the drawn label where how, how they did it. When we started the app store in our own company with eight people, guess how many web-based applications we had apart from conference? Eighty people. We are a um, tech company, but 50, with 50 web-based locations. Actually, Bron has more than 250. They are not a tech company, but they are way more people. 250 other things. You'll never be able to integrate all of these applications into your internet. That's what we tried back in 2001. Oh, there's something. So let's incorporate that one. Oh, there's something else. Let's incorporate that one. You'll be, no, you'll no, never ever have the budget to do that. So there are good other solutions. And this app store helps you to link them. And uh, we're also building a, an SSO uh, solution so that you'll automatically be logging in. Are you going to give me a, I'm run, running out of time? <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> um, so, the whole internet thing that we uh, offer is based on a personalization engine. Uh, so we pull, for the Braun, we pull information out of 10 different Active Directories, LAP systems, Lotus Notes, user directories, different technologies, and all the information about the employees are um, centralized and can be shown in profiles. We call them beefed up user profiles. It's not only the name and the picture, but skills, knowledge, languages they speak. Um, and what you can do is you can, you can create an expert search from that. Give me someone who is literate in Jira administration and can speak Chinese. Not that easy to find. Pretty easy with these deep uh, profiles. And obviously people can um, use it themselves and add skills as they learn more. And then we have this um, conference you could call is a Wikipedia for your company. Like the knowledge, the wiki, all the, the content. And then we know that if we go in the top 10 of most used websites, you don't even see, you don't only see Wikipedia, there's also Facebook, Twitter, maybe Google Plus. And that's where, what a microblog does. A microblog is like creating a conference page, but very tiny, fast. Uh, basically, it's a social search. Does anyone know this and that? Uh, did you hear that the laboratory of the third floor didn't work? And this is also fully personalized to um, uh, in different channels, so you can have that for your department, for your location, um, and it incorporates the conference which is editor. So you can put in Jira issues, you can use all the macros, like the status macro, um, you can mention people and they'll get an email, you can use tags, and those will all be um, then displayed just as in, in conference normally. And this is basically also uh, just a, a marketplace plugin that we have, a pretty cheap marketplace plugin, um, and something that adds this internet 2.0 experience, more social to your internet. Um, and then I was talking about the roof, uh, which we think is a custom theme. It's not only 
getting refined wiki or break a theme press and upload a logo and customize some, some colors. Now that's not what I'm talking about. I'm, what I'm talking about is your company has a corporate design and you want to have, still have a confluence but mimic this corporate design. Um, like here with call size. And you may see that we still use elements from a uh, normal conference. Um, this is a um, one example, or at least an approved screenshot that I may use. Um, and here you see this um, uh, app store, and they have some, it says global defined apps. So they have defined four apps that everyone will see no matter what they choose. And those are my apps, the ones that I have chosen. And um, if you look at this page, it doesn't look like a conference. It looks like a page where you'll very easily and fast find out what's up. Where you have like, places for the big news and three more news. And um, that's basically it. And um, down below, you'll find a fully flash conference. No limitations, no uh, nothing stripped down. Only the, the starting page is kind of the splendid entrance hall here. And then this is maybe a no-brainer, but it's very difficult. You want to have it fast. Confluence isn't fast, and I'm glad I'm sorry to say that. But if you install Confluence like out of the box, it's slow. It's already slow. Of your, although you don't have any content and you don't have any users. Two seconds is the, the average load time that we see with a lot of uh, conference instances. And um, if you are really interested in speed, um, I would highly recommend you to Google for Marissa Maya on speed. Just type that in, uh, in, uh, in Google. And then you'll see a talk from Marissa Maya. Back today, she's um, the CEO of Yahoo. Back then she was a product usability manager of Google. And she's talking about how Google found out how important speed is. And basically they found out that speed is most important for them. And uh, there are a lot of uh, things that we did for Vibram to make um, their confluence load in 1.2 seconds. And then you think, oh, 2 seconds, 1.2 seconds, who cares? People do care. Especially if they are in Malaysia and have a weak connection, or if they are at, uh, and have only edge connection, they also care for your system to load fast. So, and there's Atlassian is working on that also. There's a data center product uh, product up there. Uh, it's it, actually it's the last slide, so I'll, I'll be fine. Um, make it fast. You may have an IT department. You may use help of Dice or us but you want to have it fast, especially if you do personalization, if you have a lot of people, if you have a lot of content like TV3. And um, as a last thing, we're very transparent for pricing. What, we, what we're offering is, um, together with Azure, a full, um, all-inclusive project, including all licenses, including all services, and including the rollout, including the first 12 uh, months. It's Compared to a standard conference license, pretty expensive. Compared to the SharePoint alternative, pretty inexpensive. So you, you may want to find in the one or the other situation, but um, maybe this is interesting for you. And I didn't show you the um, uh, all the back end, how you configure the personalization stuff, how you make the menus, how um, this would not be uh, I would have needed way more time for that. But if you're interested, I'm here. Um, Dasa is here for way longer than I will be. And uh, thank you so much for, for listening. <laughs>